Hello students, in continuation with lecture series for quantum statistics, in this lecture we are going to discuss in detail the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of velocity curve. So we are going to begin with the basic postulates of the Maxwell-Boltzmann statistics are that the particles are distinguishable, each energy state can contain any number of particles, the total number of particles along with total energy for all the particles in the entire system is a constant. Now, what is the distribution of speeds in a gas at a certain temperature? This question was answered and it is a very common question where you are asked to discuss about how speeds are distributed in the gas varying with temperature. For hot and cold gases, how does the speed distribution vary? So, Maxwell and Boltzmann gave the answer to this question that how the speed of molecules are distributed in an ideal gas. The answer can also fit in the question that what is the use of Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve? So, the curve in general is represented in this form where you can see here it is rising. It comes out as a peak where we are getting the probable velocity and then there is a decline. So, we get one maximum value and then there is a decline. So, there are more gas molecules which are moving with what speed we get to know from this graph. But if you notice, this graph is not symmetrical. There is a long here unending line or the tail on the high speed right end of the graph and the graph continues to large speeds. But to the left, if you observe, you will see there is a zero that end at zero since a molecule will not have a speed less than zero. And air molecules which are surrounding us are also moving to predict their behavior with temperature. The graph helps us. So first, let us mathematically understand it. We know and in the previous lecture, we have derived this expression, which tells us that the Maxwell-Boltzmann law of distribution of velocities among the molecules of an ideal gas is derived on the basis of classical statistics. And according to this law, number of gas molecules possessing velocity between V and V plus dV is equal to 4 pi n, where n is total number of molecules into m upon 2 pi kT to the power of 3 by 2, where m is mass per molecule, K is Boltzmann constant and T is absolute temperature into e to the power of minus mv square upon 2kt into v square dv. Now, we will take the probability of the molecules having velocity lying between v and v plus dv. So, probability possible events upon total number of events. That means how many molecules are lying in the range of V and V plus dV divided by the total number of molecules. So this formula comes out as PV dV is equal to 4 pi N gets cancelled into M upon 2 pi kT to the power of 3 by 2 into E to the power of minus M upon 2 kT V square into V square dV. TV. Now, we have to represent this law in a graphical manner in order to answer very important questions like temperature variation, what happens when it is hot, what happens when it is cold, how the graph varies. So, we will just see mathematically the curvature of the graph. Let us assume under root 2 m k t v equal to x and since we know that half plus one is equal to three by two so m upon two pi kt this expression here we will write it as m upon two pi kt plus m upon two pi kt to the power of half using this method we put it in the probability formula 
and simplifying it, we get y is equal to 4 upon under root pi x square e to the power of minus x square dx. Now we will plot this graph against x axis and the curve will be like this. You can see this is coming out as a quadratic equation or more of the parabolic form. So this is how we have actually got this curve. Now, number of molecules, the velocities of which are lying between the values x and d plus x is going to be proportional to how much area this graph is covering. And it will, the area covered by this graph will give us the total number of molecules. And probable value of velocity corresponding to x equal to 1 will be under root 2 kt by m, which we are going to derive the Maxwell's law of distribution of velocities establishes that in a steady state, the number of molecules with a given velocity remains constant. This is very important. Now, from the probability equation, it is clear that for V equal to zero, probability is coming out as zero because if you put V equal to zero, P equal to zero, hence the probability of a molecule to have zero velocity is nil because everything will come down to zero. Is there any evidence in favor of satisfying this Maxwell's distribution according of velocity? Yes, the important evidence is the finite width of spectral lines. See, the uh, spectral lines get spread and till date there is very less research on how much width the spectral lines get shifted to. But the Maxwell-Boltzmann law of distribution of velocity helps in proving the fact that the variation of the intensity of spectral lines with distance from the center is obeying this law of velocity distribution. Now, this question, often it has been asked in section A in many exams in uh, undergraduate level courses that what does the area under Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve represent? So the total area under the entire curve will be equal to total number of molecules in the gas. See, you can see traction into this. This is total number of molecules. They, they even ask a very common question. As you can see, it has been uh, represented beautifully in this graph that see, for cold gases, the graph is becoming taller and more narrower. As the gas is getting hotter, the graph is becoming short and wide. This is the required for the area under the curve, that is total number of molecules to stay constant. So mathematics says that if the multiple of two quantities is remaining a constant, then if I increase one quantity, I have to decrease the other in order to maintain consistency. This is exactly what is happening here. See, for cold gas, the temperature is going to be less and the peak of the curve is higher. When I start increasing the temperature, then more and more motion of molecules starts happening. E is equal to half kT. The graph starts spreading and the maxima shifts, as you can see here in this graph, and maxima is becoming lesser. So discussion on this graph has also been asked many number of times. So if molecules discuss Maxwell-Boltzmann law of distribution of velocities or speeds for gas molecules. So the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution can be used to determine the distribution of kinetic energy also of a set of molecules. It is based on the theory of probability and the distribution of the speeds for a certain gas at any temperature. What are the factors that are affecting this spread? The temperature and the molar mass. Let us see how it is affecting the temperature. This is very important. Many times you have been asked, 
how maxwell boltzmann velocity curve depends on temperature c probability of the particle with that of kinetic energy and even if you can do it for the kinetic energy plot you see for the lower temperature maxima is here as you keep increasing the temperature the maxima declines but the activation energy that means from here onwards it is becoming active also varies but the total number of molecule remains constant see higher temperature is allowing a larger fraction of molecules to acquire greater amount of kinetic energy because kinetic energy here is being given by Boltzmann law half kt when you increase t automatically energy increases and the graph spreads out because we have to maintain consistency of this graph. So the more temperature you will rise, the more the graph will spread. At lower temperature, molecules have less energy. Hence, the spread is less. Distribution is over a smaller range. Here, once again, you can see, see for a warmer sample, how much the graph has spread. And for a colder sample, the spread is less. Now, the very one more question which is asked as a short question is, why does this distribution flatten out as temperature of a molecule increases in the Maxwell-Boltzmann plot? See, as the temperature of molecule increases, the distribution flattens out now because molecules are having greater energy at higher temperature. The molecules are moving faster. Hence, these plots are flattening out as the temperatures are increasing. Left end of the pl uh, plot is once again, you can see at zero and as the flattens out at higher temperatures, area under each plot is same for a constant number of molecules and the area under the curve must not change with an increase in temperature. The maxima of these curves gives us the most probable energy at normal temperature and the most probable energy at a higher temperature. Decline of maxima takes place when we increase the temperature. Curve broadens and shifts towards the right hand side. As you can see here in this way, energy of activation also varies. We are increasing the temperature and the curve is broadening. And maxima of curve is decreasing when temperature is increased. For molecular mass, what happens? Now look here. All molecules have the same kinetic energy, half mv square at the same temperature. So the fraction of molecules with higher velocity will increase as m and thus the molecular weight decreases. So on an average, heavier molecules are going to move slowly compared to the lighter molecules. And heavier molecules will have a smaller spread distribution and the lighter will have a greater one. Another very big importance of Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution spread graph is that it gives us three very important things of science. One, most probable speed average speed and the root mean square speed. We get all these three values from the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve itself, a very big importance of Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution spread. The three important velocities we are getting from this spread out. That is the most probable speed, the mean speed and the root mean square speed we get. At certain temperatures, the individual speed of the molecule keeps changing, but the speed distribution remains the same. So Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve is helping us in finding the average velocity, root mean square velocity, probable velocity. It is helping us in telling that as temperature increases, the graph spreads. Thank you.